In this video, we want to look at what factors affect how fast something evaporates. So it's rate of evaporation. In order for us to do that, we want to make sure we have a good grasp of why do things evaporate, what happens when they evaporate. So over here, let's just say we have a container, maybe a beaker that includes some liquid in it. We're just saying there's a liquid in there. That liquid is at a specific temperature, meaning it has some distribution of its kinetic energies. Well, if I have a molecule sitting here on the surface, well, what would prevent it from leaving? It would be all the attractions that that molecule sees between all the other molecules uh, around it. Right? Those would be the intermolecular force attractions to that molecule to the other molecules. In order for that molecule to be able to evaporate, leave the liquid, and become a gas molecule, it's got to break those attractions. Well, the only energy that it has available to it to break those attractions is kinetic energy. So if we're looking at, well, how could it have enough kinetic energy? There is going to be, we're going to see some threshold kinetic energy that it needs to break all of these attractions. We call that our escape kinetic energy. So this is the energy that is required to break the attractions between each of uh, the molecules around a specific molecule in the liquid. So if we have enough kinetic energy, if I have a molecule sitting over here, any of these molecules with a kinetic energy greater than its escape kinetic energy, that molecule is going to be able to leave. So whatever is going to affect my rate of evaporation is going to have to do with how many molecules have enough kinetic energy to escape. Well, if you're sitting at a specific temperature and you're looking at that liquid, this kinetic energy that is required is specific to each individual compound or element. So every element has an escape kinetic energy. So if I'm dealing with water, it has a specific escape kinetic energy. I have ethanol, a specific escape kinetic energy. Well, if I'm dealing with water molecules here, the only way that I could change how fast it evaporates is by giving me more molecules with enough kinetic energy to escape. Well, that can happen by changing the temperature. Let's say now we go to a higher temperature. That means that our average kinetic energy is higher, <coughs> meaning we have more molecules with a higher kinetic energy. Well, now at our second temperature here, where we would say that T2 is greater than whatever the initial temperature was, now we have all of these molecules. So a higher percent of molecules have the ability to leave because we have more molecules with a kinetic energy greater than escape kinetic energy. So we'd have a greater fraction of molecules sitting on the surface here that would be able to leave the surface, which would cause it to evaporate a lot faster, more molecules that can leave. Okay? So if we're dealing with the same compound, the only way that we can change how fast something evaporates is by allowing uh, the temperature of what's going to be evaporating be at a higher temperature. Now if we're comparing the evaporation rate between two different compounds, Let's say, for example, this is the escape kinetic energy of water. Well, if we look at something that has a weaker escape kinetic energy, lower amount of energy that's required, <coughs> for example, let's say we have ethanol. Ethanol has this escape kinetic energy. And the reason why we'd say it has a lower escape kinetic energy is because it has weaker intermolecular force attractions. So that means that the attractions between my ethanol particles and those particles around it is going to be lower, it's going to be weaker, which means it's going to take less energy for it to be able to leave. Okay, And so now instead of only these particles being able to leave, if we're dealing with ethanol, we have all of these plus whatever we would have had with water. And so we see now we have more particles that have enough kinetic energy to leave, and if we're dealing with ethanol, the evaporation rate would be greater. So kind of let's bring this to uh, a conclusion to look at the factors that affect how our um, evaporation rate changes. Okay, so the first one is temperature. Okay, so if we look at temperature, if we increase the temperature of a system, what that does is that increases the number of molecules with a kinetic energy greater than that escape kinetic energy. Since we have more molecules that have a kinetic energy greater than our escape kinetic energy, that means that, like we saw here, our evaporation rate is going to go up because we're going to have more particles that are going to be able to leave. 
In addition to that, if we're comparing two different compounds, okay, if we look at the escape kinetic energy, anything with a lower escape kinetic energy, like ethanol, ver or excuse me, methanol versus water, we would see a lower escape kinetic energy is going to increase our evaporation rate as well. And so we want to think, what are the variables that are going to affect my escape kinetic energy? One of them is our intermolecular force strength, as we just mentioned here, methanol versus water. If I'm going to compare methanol and water, methanol has weaker intermolecular force attractions. It's going to have a lower escape kinetic energy. Therefore, it has a higher rate of evaporation. Whereas if we compare two things that have similar intermolecular force strengths, like methanol and ethanol, as we've seen in lab already, the only difference between those is that ethanol is bigger. So we'll also see that the size of the molecule is important as well. So the larger and larger and larger and larger uh, our molecules, the higher and higher and higher this escape kinetic energy, the more energy that's required for that molecule to be able to leave and escape. Okay. So hopefully now we see, when we're talking about evaporation rate, the lower the escape kinetic energy, meaning we have weaker intermolecular forces or smaller molecules, the higher the evaporation rate. Now if we're just thinking of a single compound and how the evaporation rate would change for that compound, we can change the temperature. And what that does is it gives us more high energy, high kinetic energy molecules, which increases the number of molecules with enough kinetic energy to escape. And that allows our evaporation rate to increase. So hopefully this gives us a good idea about evaporation rate. In the next video, we're going to look at the connection between evaporation rate and this idea of vapor pressure.